Hey everybody, this is Perch, and I want to say on the offset, I don't believe what I'm about to tell you. Uh, what I mean by that is, um, this is a question that people have had, and it's a theory of where comics are going to go. And I don't think it's going to play out like this. I think that this is a little bit too extreme. But in this case, it does benefit us to talk about it in extreme terms, because it's, otherwise it gets to be a messy conversation. It's too, too many variants, and it just it gets silly. Um, no, not too many variants like variant covers, although you're on the right track. Um, it's basically this. Are we headed for a world where comic books are going to hit a definite fork in the road of comic books that will either be kind of more like how current U.S. comics are from a Marvel or a DC, limited amount of pages. I mean, think, think like actually the uh, X-Men book where there's four or five data sheets in the comic. And there's 20 variant covers, and there's uh, you know high prestige art uh, certainly is in there, and that is the comic. <laughs> um, that's one type, and the other type is more along the lines of kind of manga or web comics or things like that, where maybe you have a 60 to 80 page comic, and it's black and white, and the art's a little rougher. There's no variant covers, cheaper paper, and it's just kind of a you know, uh, a mass approach of pages. Are we headed for a world where you're going to see kind of, for lack of a better word, prestige level comics? I don't know. I love that term, but where you have really high end artists, uh, definitely top people drawing those variant covers, the covers themselves start to get a little bit more collectible, a little bit more like trading cards where you have, uh, this, this kind of this comic, but you know, the, the variant cover, become something that you want to collect all of. Like you want to buy five copies of this comic because you need all the, the tr you know, collectible trading card like covers. Not comics are trading cards, but comic covers where they're almost treated like trading cards. And the interior of the comic doesn't matter too much. It looks very nice. It's printed on really nice paper. It's glossy. You know, it's got a, a one of the top artists on the book and everything else. And it's, but it's, and, and the comic really doesn't last. It's not intended as a, you know, 100 issues of this or 200 issues of this. It's continuity really doesn't matter. Like if you're collecting this comic book and they reboot it a few times and suddenly the character's acting completely out of character. I mean, like who cares? Because the product is as a collectible, not as a comic. That the U.S. comic market, maybe a Marvel type book, becomes a collectible more than a comic. The story, it matters, but not too much. It's really about creating this kind of maybe $6, $8, $10 collectible that has a lot of formats on it. And I think people, where, one area where that might go to is, you know, you start seeing bags come back and you see the, the comic shipped in a blind bag. And it's like, which of the three covers will you want? You'll have to buy to find out. One of the things that I keep hearing from uh, one of the two big publishers that I talk to on a regular basis with distribution is that they are desperate to kind of get in on this. Uh, they're a couple years late, by the way, but this blind box approach that is big in toys right now, where you have uh, kind of Hatchimals was the thing a few years ago. And now I think there's like the five surprise where you get you buy a ball and it's got things in there, but you don't know what it is until you open it. This is seen as very hot with the kids market. And so there's a lot of conversations around how do we make comics like that. But all of those things kind of point to a more collectible, one-off. Collectible not in terms of like getting every issue, but collectible in terms of collecting every cover. And so the, the importance of the comic becomes way more about the, you know, quote-unquote collectible nature of it and the cover and a lot less about whatever's inside of it. And then the other extreme, like I mentioned before, talking about that a little bit more, is that the people who want stories, the people who want kind of pulp, uh, you know, stories driving things forward, because there's definitely an interest for that as well. But in order to get that and get it in a more cost effective kind of timely way, do we get kind of this idea of, you know, art that's a little bit rougher, a little bit more simplistic, completely forgoing coloring or rarely doing coloring, or maybe you just put out these kind of large volume of black and white, quick sketched out comics. And the ones that are popular, somebody circles around and colors them later and then releases them as a collected edition or something like that. Basically where something like a Shonen Jump from back in the day, these kind of phone books full of just 
you know, a blitz of comics becomes more popularized in the U.S. Because there are publishers in the U.S. also looking at that and saying, rather that this isn't an anthology, these are full comics and whatever that new format looks like, why don't uh, we publish like one giant book for a cheaper price point, like a $10 price point, and you basically cram it full of a bunch of different stories. And again, the ones that hit, you collect into a graphic novel. The ones that don't, you quietly retire. And you don't worry about expensive paper. You don't worry about covers. It's really just a mass market approach. And maybe the printing side even kind of goes away, and that's just web comics in, in a lot of respects. It's just people are creating stuff. There's this huge, huge just slam of content. It's organized in a particular way, and then we're looking for anything that gains traction and we're flipping that into you know, more prestige stuff. Is that the very stark, uh, no pun intended, world we're headed to of uh, comics in the US or some comics in the US, Marvel comics, types of them, they start to veer very heavily into this prestige collectible type format. I mean, some might argue, by the way, that the $25 Kickstarter and Indiegogo crowd campaign type comics fit more of that. Now, I'm sure nobody doing those would want to admit or would want to, uh, admit's the wrong word, but would, would acknowledge, would, uh, would voluntarily say, yeah, the story doesn't matter. This is just about making it collectible. But I suspect that's what a lot of the buyers are actually doing. They're paying $25. Part of what they're doing to justify that amount of money are the collectible aspects of it. The, the nice cover, these sketch kind of things, these perks that you see with, uh, you know, with, you know, reward tiers that are unlocked in crowdfunding campaigns. You might argue that several of these crowdfunding books actually fit this format. And so how long before Marvel or DC takes a look at this and goes, yeah, we're going to put out a comic at a $25 price point to compete with some of these crowdfunded books. And we're going to do the same kind of thing. And if you, if you want to pay more money for it, if more people jump in on this, then we'll add bonus pinups and we'll add a t-shirt and that kind of stuff. I mean, you might, I, I suspect that is going to be the direction that a certain segment of this, this market is going to go in. Um, but I also think that you will have this, this other thing. I think you will see a Shonen Jump, whether it's print or digital or both, kind of equivalent in the U.S. where it's the idea of no frills comics. You're just, you're going for comics. You're going to pay $10. You're going to get like 100 pages of comics. And that's, you know, it's all about the story and it's all about kind of this, uh, you know, collectability be damned. When you're done with this, you can throw it out the window. You don't even, you know, you don't care as much about that part. Um, I, I, you know, so like I said at the, the start of this video, I don't completely believe what I just said. I don't believe we're heading to that stark of a split of comics. I don't think we're headed toward a, you know, path A and path B and that's it. But I do think you're going to see some gravity in those two extremes meaning you're going to see comics kind of pulled in one direction or the other. And I, I think that's, uh, I, I'm not sure really what to think about that. I don't particularly love either of those <laughs> options is a thing as uh, as a, either, certainly as a retailer, I don't like either of those options, but as a, as a fan of comics, um, that's not really the polarized world I want to be in. So I admit some of, uh, the way I'm looking at this must be bias. I mean, you know, it may be bias. It may be that uh, I just don't want to admit that things are being pulled in that direction. But I think that it, it is it is happening to some extent. I definitely think uh, the you know the big two and Marvel in particular are looking at ways to make their comics into more collectibles than comics, and with a price point increase to match. And I think that there's a lot of people who would really love to crack the we just want to produce stories. I mean, there's there's a lot of right, ar artists who can work fairly quickly, and if you could somehow eliminate a lot of the noise that the big publishers put on them in terms of how comics are made and kind of the editorial process and all the rest, and they could go more quickly to consumer, they would love to do it. Uh, but the other factor of, of everything I just said is there's a lot of uh, there, there's a lot else in there as well around how you. Yeah, how do you charge? How do people get paid? Where's the money coming from? I mean, there's just, there's a lot of things to figure out, but I wanted to get your take on it. What do you think? Are we at a fork in the road where comics are going one direction or the other? Does one sound better or the other? I suspect 
my audience of people listening to this channel will like uh, option number two, just the, the, the no frills comic, even if it means they lose the coloring, they'd rather get kind of a massive story. I suspect more people will go in that direction, but I may be wrong. So let me know what you think in the comments below, like, and subscribe. And thanks for listening.